Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fire Up Michigan. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, the Motor City Madmouth. Judging by the way this broadcast is going to turn on, I wish I could invite Rodney Dangerfield, but there's only a little problem. Oh, yeah. He's dead. So, <laughs> uh, but the Lions wouldn't mind earning some of that Rodney Dangerfield respect anyways after what they did to the Green Bay Packers last night over at Lambeau Field. If you, folks, if you've ever been to Lambeau Field, let me tell you, that's a bucket place. And uh, trip all day long and then some so with that said let me introduce you to the crew and what how appropriate would it be to bring a packer person on the candy ebling of the south florida tribune aka my other half welcome back candy i know this wasn't easy for you to come on this show but you're our mvp most valuable person and we know if anybody can handle this challenge of entertainment it is definitely you candace well, thank you. I feel a little out of sorts because I'm normally on Fire Up Wisconsin, which is the better show, but... Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah, don't, don't, tell me. Don't, <laughs> don't tell me she doesn't get cross-promotion, right? Because she definitely does. That's oh, show. I get it. I but get it. I'm, oh, no. I'm happy to discuss whatever you'd like to discuss. All right. Well, with that said, you know what? I'm going to take a break from the crew and whoever gets to read this one, other than Mr. Will Vogel, all right, who's in charge of reading that? I got you. Hi, guys. I've told people all year the Lions are going to be a team that will get better and better each year. Coach Campbell is a coach you would love to play for and give everything you got for. And he's absolutely right. We've seen it on the field. Evidently, we have. But with that said, we'll go with a proper introduction. Smoking Jeremy B., welcome back. Oh, glad to be back. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to you as well. And George Eichhorn, welcome back. Good to be here and good to bask in that Lions victory. Yeah, well, we got a lot of Lions stuff to get to. And by the way, Candy <laughs> Ebling and I covered the Jacksonville Jaguars defeating the Tennessee Titans. They are the AFC South Division champs. Congratulations to the Jaguars. The irony between the Lions and the Jaguars wins this week is they were both by 20 to 16 scores. Lions beating the Packers 2016, the Jaguars took care of the Titans 20 to 16 as well. So with that said, we'll talk about the fact that Lions are now nine and eight, or eight and two in their last 10 games, swept two from the Green Bay Packers and eliminated Green Bay. Well, okay, Candy, what's your take on it? At least she pulled out the old Packers hat. So this is uh didn't quite work out for you that you were swept by them this year. That is true, Scott. We were swept by the Lions this year. We've had a we've had a difficult year. I would say I would I would give you guys kudos. I think your Dan Campbell hire was very good. I think he's a motivator, and I think he his he gets his teams and his players playing for him from start to finish, no matter where they're at at the game, whether they're down by twenty or up by twenty. Um, I give you guys a lot of kudos for that. I also give you guys kudos for getting Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson in the draft. I think you guys drafted really well. My Packers, obviously, they did not have the season that they wanted to. There's Obviously, there's always rumors about will Aaron come back, will he not come back. That presser after the game has me confused about him. That's you know, weird. a lot of things have, have got me confused about it because some of the things he said <laughs> lean towards him coming back and some of the things totally lean towards him riding off into the sunset. Especially I, that whole carousel analogy. That one right there, That the way he ended that presser saying, you know, sometimes when you're on the carousel, you just re realize it's time to get off. And well, Will, Will Vogel's back. Yeah, as as they say in the soap opera world, as the Aaron turns. Ah, <laughs> so, but yeah. So with that said, Jeremy the Lions who win two against the Packers by all means. And let's face the reality. You know, I think the biggest downfall for the Packers this year was that Rodgers never got on the same page with his wide receivers. Patrick Mahomes took a lot of his receivers down to Texas that got on the same page. Anytime you have a relatively new receiver corp, it's wise to get on the same page. And I know that the drama surrounding Rodgers all year didn't enable him to do it, or maybe he thought he was better than he was. I don't know. So, 
Well, um, Will Vogel asks, did my first comment show? Yes, I read it live on there. And also he says, hi, guys, again. Well, you know, if he's really worried about it, then you know what? Let's do it again. There you go. There you go. Will Vogel says, hi, guys. I've told people all year that the Lions are going to be a team that will get better and better each year. Coach Campbell is a coach you would love to play for and give everything you got for. All right, well, now you have it. You get twice as much exposure. But getting back to the whole thing about it, Aaron Rodgers' lack of familiarity, I think, really was a detriment to the Packers with his wideouts. Obviously, you have your running attack being what it is, less Jamison Williams who the Lions wires for age, I think, one or two years ago. But, George, uh, but continue on, Jeremy, about the Lions sweeping the pack this year. Well, we didn't just sweep the pack, though. We swept the Bears and we split with Minnesota, which I said as soon as the schedule came out and I saw the rosters, the way they were lining up prior to the preseason. I said the Lions will go 5-1 and one in the division. I'm not saying they'll win the division, but right now, the way I'm looking at it, it should be Minnesota, either Lions or Packers at 2 or 3 and Bears in the basement. Despite the fact that they got the number one pick and have $24 million in their pocket for free agents. We've seen a lot of worse the first scenarios. I've seen them firsthand with the Lions and Jaguars making complete turnarounds within a year's time. Go ahead, George. Well, I have to disagree. I would have never predicted. I would never have given Detroit a chance to win nine games this year, nor would I ever given them a chance to sweep the Packers this year. So, I'm not one that's going to sit and say, I told you so. And I'm telling you that this is not the typical Lions year. Uh, this this is something of, of a phenom that we have seen and sort of a revolution going on on this team right now. Uh, the way they finished is outstanding. The way they handled Green Bay is, um, is, is remarkable, mm-hmm. really, compared to previous Lions teams. And the fact that they beat Green Bay in the standings. So take that. So it's, it's, a nine, it's not only nine and eight. But you finish in second place, right? It's just a, it's just an incredible set of events, turn of events. Will's right on target. They'll play for this coach. They'll play for him at midnight. They'll play for him on Belle Isle. They'll play for him in Alaska if they have to. <laughs> they love him. They love their coach. And all that being said, it was a great victory for Detroit <clears throat> and, a one, and a very happy ending to a long seventeen game season that really turned out in Detroit's favor. Yeah, also keep in mind, though, they beat the Packers last year, the final game of the year, so I believe they have a three-game winning streak. I think Jordan Love was under center last year. As yes, well. uh, yes. No. Right, What's the overall record between the two? Uh, no, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. Me. Don't care. Yeah, I think you guys got for. like a 32-game lead on us, and I know that there's a tie in there, too, from back prior to when Favre was there. I think it was Dan the Magic Man Mikowski was the one responsible for the tie that year. But who do, what do I know about NFL history and the Lions? Yeah, what do I know about me? George and I lived it. No, we all know, Candy, that by the time the Lions ever get even with the Packers, I'll be residing in. Wisconsin intermit over at was it Wisconsin Memorial Garden yeah, yeah. where I'm at. I'll be buried. Up. I won't be buried. I'm actually in a mausoleum that finally had our gravesite. Uh, they ha- uh, there's no such thing. Well, then mausoleums, museums, whatever you call those. I'll be fed- feeding the fish at the mouth of the Asabo River, like my son. You know, so I'm not worried about us ever catching up with you, Kane. You guys, uh, I'll give her the one thing she really has over the three of us clowns that the that- Packers own the Lions. Although at least the one thing we can fall back on is at least unlike the Bears where the Packers own the Bears. You can't say that in the last few games. So with that said, I heard some other interesting stacks I want to bring up. And, you know, Will is certainly going to be our college football playoff guy here because neither none of us are watching it. But he's a sorry non-Michigan related. But Bennett has two rushing TVs for Georgia. Georgia. That's yep. fine. So, uh, he's keeping up stabs, you guys can. But I got some other interesting stats I want to point out that are really pretty cool. Teams with a winning record after being five plus games under 500. There's only four of them. And some of the stuff I get is on Instagram. So, you know, if you want to know where I get some of my good material, Instagram definitely helps me in that sense. But the Lions in 2022 began one and six, ended up nine and eight. 2021, the Dolphins were one and seven. 
ended up nine and eight. In 1970, the Bengals were one and six and ended up eight and six. And in 1962, yes, the year I was born, the Buffalo Bills are 0 and five, and they finished seven, six, and one. All right, George, I'm going to swing it around counterclockwise. What are your thoughts about the fact that only four teams with five? That's a pretty interesting stat. And I think the Bungles are the last one to make the playoffs after starting so crappy, if I'm not mistaken, because they kept saying that. Remember, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. They they, they said that the Bungles uh, were the last ones to do that. Um, I think it's very impressive, Scott. I'm very impressed with you, Scott, in getting those statistics as well. But it just shows you how difficult it is, like you stated, with those four teams in history and now the Lions becoming part of that history, even though they failed to make the playoffs, it's not their fault. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it really isn't. And and it, and the turnarounds are not that easy in pro football, although I will tell you this. It seems like they've become a little bit more commonplace in the most recent past as far as making the playoffs after you didn't make the playoffs, you know, all that stuff. I mean, let's face it, you know, last year, three wins, and this year, nine. Uh, the Lions, it's just a tremendous turnaround, one for the books. I like it, and I like the fact that, Scott, like you said, you were able to get those off of Instagram. Well, I, ironically, believe it or not, Brian Flores, who's supposed to interview for the Cleveland Browns defensive coordinator, is actually the one that coached the Dolphins in 2021, and, of course, he landed as a linebacker's coach with Pittsburgh for this year anyways. Hopefully, Brian will be able to get a head coaching job at some point down the line. But if he lands with Cleveland as a defensive coordinator, at least he still has a name out there. So the Dolphins still let him go, so for whatever it's worth. All right, Jeremy, what your seems like the Lions are on the wrong end of a lot of stats, but it's all right to be on the right end of some stats, more so the right end instead of the wrong. Go ahead, take it from there, Jeremy. You know what? Those are amazing stats, and it's amazing what they did. And will I say that I didn't waver midseason when we were one and six? No, I can't say that because you guys know. I said I told you guys then. I said I had him at a seven to ten win season going into the season when I first started talking with you guys. I said, but I wavered, and I said I see five to seven wins. And then after they won a few, I was like, no, I'm taking it back. They're going to hit that nine this year. Well, Do you remember that, George? Yeah, I do remember that. And you're right, Jeremy. You did go on the record way back in the the beginning of the season. Well, amazingly enough, Jeremy, in that window that we're talking about, TJ Hawkinson got traded. Everybody thought the Lions were. I was the only one that said this was a great trade. Remember, you didn't like it, George. Scott nope. didn't like it at the time. And I sit there, I go, he was leading the team in drops. He had two good games out of eight games or seven games. He wasn't worth what he wanted. Well, face the reality, Jerry. I'm not af- Jeremy, I'm not afraid to give credit where it's due. So if you want to go ahead and buy a balloon, blow that thing up bigger no. than up there. No, you want to know what I'm happy about? What's that? Our team has a winning record in the same old Lions narrative. It's in the rearview mirror being lowered into the g- grave right now. The dirt's not thrown on it yet, but it's being lowered. Well, I'm not really saying can. that they can't rise like Lazarus, but hey, <laughs> well, I, I, it's a lot created, better than what it was. I've always created my existence, Jeremy, in this business. You give credit where it's due, which is why I, the TJ Hawkinson comment was brought up give you credit where it's due. With that said, don't say anything because otherwise your next one line will be two or three minutes. So leave it alone so Candy gets a piece of the action. Just kidding with you, Jeremy. I only care because, you know, I love your other game. Yeah. But you got to remember, you got to remember, TJ is still on the division champions and he's going to the Pro Bowl. And you know what? Well, it's not a total. All I'm saying, it's not a total bad trade for Minnesota. No, it's not. Yeah. And he he provided a whole whopping four touchdowns for him since he got there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to win any Minnesota fans here, but I, I have a feeling that the Minnesota Vikings, to me, don't make the final four. I mean, uh, I, I, I can't. I agree with you. Uh, I don't I, I, as much as I hate to say it, I think they're the most fraudulent division winner going into the playoffs. We knew Brady and the Bucks would be bad, but we knew that whole division would be bad. Right. So. We expected well. The whole division's bad, so it's well. The Giants, to lose. The Giants, I think the Giants are frauds too, but they're in a wild card, not not a division winner. 
Well, the, well the Giants you know, wait a didn't do George. it with smoke and mirrors, though. Yeah, they did it because George. they finally had their running back healthy. Yeah. George, hold on. Sorry to interrupt you guys but and gal. Okay, but I, I think the Giants are in much better shape than most people think that they are. This team was on house money. Nobody expected them to do a darn thing. And how has it worked out? They, they bring in Brian Dable, who's won championships everywhere with Belichick. And he will save it and whatnot. This guy knows how to win. All right. Let me turn it over to Candy while she's waiting patiently about these this particular statistic, Dan. I think it's pretty impressive. I do have to say, I wonder ease of schedule on some of the with some of those. <laughs> in- I'm sorry. Will Vogel popped in and I read what he said about what I like to call TJ. Um, I also would w- wonder about injuries in the season, how many teams were affected, who was the most affected team by injuries. I think you guys, you know, you guys played well. Um, I would, I would say that for the Packers, like our offensive line was injured a, different parts of it a lot of the season. So you put a lot of blame Scott on Rogers, not, um, practicing with the wide receivers Uh that's part of it but part of it is also your offensive line your offensive line gave jared goff the time of the two days worth of time to throw yesterday he had all the time in the world if he couldn't make those passes and there were a bunch of them that he didn't make it would be unbelievable i mean you if you would have put rogers in that same with that same offensive line, there would have been a different outcome. Yeah, well, I'll say this much. Penny Sewell may not have been a sexy pick like Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle, but boy, how has that worked out for the Hunter? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we also, oh, I real quick, I just wanted to add one thing. We already had our first coach fired in Lovey Smith. That happened last night. That's a shame. What is a shame. One that's the second year in a row they won and done coaches. They are you shouldn't do that. That's a horribly ran organization right now. Well, Cliff uh, Terry got booted again today, too. Just so you well, know. Let's stay oh, on, well, let's that stay was expected. That one was let's but uh, what I did want to say is on topic, the reason why I brought that up is the Texans have already reached out to interview Ben Johnson. I said he'd get head coaching interviews this year. Well, I think he will too. I mean, you yeah. know. I know the coaching thing will be something that's wide open. And I know over the course of the next several episodes, we're going to probably get into that. We'll see if he lands a spot. Mm-hmm. But I don't consider that Houston Texans job a premium. I just, I, and I just want to interject. Candy's absolutely right, Scott and, and, and Jeremy. The Lions, with the health of the defense, now the offensive line wasn't healthy all year for Detroit, but you're right, Candy. It was much more healthier than the one that protected. Aaron Rodgers, no question yes, about it. One hundred percent. I'm yeah. not going to question that at all. And also, you want to think about something. This is now 34 straight regular season games that the Lions have not had their starting five on the O line. Amazing. Yeah, I, mean, well, I didn't know it was that high. I wasn't sure it was that high either. <laughs> well, because remember we started with Taylor Decker last year. We started with Taylor Decker on the IR for the first eight games. And then by the time he came back, uh, Ragnow got hurt. Right. So we never had our whole O-line last year. And then this year, Vitae hurt his back in the first preseason game and never played a down after that. That's true. Well, we'll throw in stats at you everywhere. Guess what? We're going on to something else. But this time we're talking about some national television. And by the way, well, Vogel, if you're still paying attention, uh, we might decide to bring you on Fire Up Michigan down the road if the committee agrees here to bring you on. We got to just make sure, though, it's this is a committee decision. It's not going to be solo anymore. So, you know, just think about it. It is a committee, Will Vogel. You have to be voted in for an episode. But keep contributing, anyways. All right. Give them something to think about, anyways. And keep typing, Will, okay? Because I can't type that fast if I tried. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about the Lions. First appearance, national TV. Uh, on NBC, excluding Thanksgiving. Now, I want to talk about how many people gave this team a chance to win. ESPN had Dominic Foxworth, Kimberly A. Martin, Chris Canty, Damian Woody, the former Lion, all picked Green Bay. So there you go. It's fine. 
if it's not, it's okay. Don't worry. Well, you know, I just stay tuned, man, uh, for updates. <coughs> for that again, Dominic Foxworth, Kimberly A. Martin, Chris Canty, Damian Woody, all pick Green Bay. I, I will tell you of all the people that they do. I do like Diana Rossini, but I haven't seen her in a while. She's been doing the mom thing for a little while, though. She made an appearance over the weekend. But then NBC had Jack Collinsworth, who was actually 10 and 5, Rodney Harrison, 12 and 6, Mike Florio, 12 and 6 with his picks. Matthew Berry, 15 and 3. Chris Sims, 14 and 4. Maria Taylor, 12 and 6. Jason Garrett, 10 and 7. They all pick Green Bay. And Tony Ju- Tony Dundee from what? Jackson, Michigan, I think it is. Yes, yep. he is. 11 and 7. And once upon a time, thanks to his recommendation. Okay, Jim Caldwell was the last Lions full time coach to get a winning record. So I'm going to start off with you, George. Respect, lack of respect. Well, one person got it right out of this group. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, there's not much respect out there for the Lions entering that game. That's for darn sure. And then in the Detroit Free Press, three out of the five Free Press sports writers picked a Green Bay to win. And the Detroit News, it was 50 50. Two guys picked the Lions and two guys picked Green Bay. And no 90, respect. No 90, respect. 97 won the ticket. I think 80% of them said Green Bay was winning. There you go. Well, you know what the thing is, is they're looking at the history. They're looking at Lambo. They're looking at the frozen tundra. Yeah. They're looking at Aaron Rodgers. Da, 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 da. So well, you can I, throw all those things out. I had to set them straight because they said, well, the Lions rushing defense gives up 5.3 yards per carry. I said, you have to look at what they give up to mobile quarterbacks versus running backs. I said, that 5.3 includes the mobile quarterbacks. If you take that away, and which I had and did the math, it went down to 3.4 yards per carry, which Green Bay actually had a decent night. They got 3.7 yards per carry out of their <laughs> running backs. I'll tell you what, Jeremy, you're really digging for those stats, but a good that's a good one. I appreciate you sharing that with us tonight. But, no, you're right, Scott, all the pundits, and that's why uh, running back got so emotional on that interview after the game where he told these people to stop it and just listen to the Lions. They want to win. They're hungry, and they obviously beat the uh, all those prognosticators. Yep. I loved it when he said, we're not playing. You know what I mean? Because that's their job. They're not playing. <laughs> well, let, let me look, break down this list. Candy, give me your take. And I want to go over this list a little bit more in detail. Go ahead, Candy. What are we talking about again? I'm sorry. We're talking about the Lions' first appearance on national TV. And I would say 99% of these people that I just mentioned didn't pick them. Tony Dungy was a was the lone yeah, that's better. individual. I think a lot of them thought it, if you looked at their score, they predicted a very close score. They right. gave the edge to the Packers. Yes, probably because of home field. Uh, typically, and I realize this was a game in January, but December, the Packers are unbeaten at home. They knew it was going to be cold. Uh, I don't think they... And I don't think anybody saw all the fumbles and all the balls being knocked out of people's hands as much as it was last night. But yes, the Lions, I don't think have gotten the respect that maybe they deserve in previous years. I think they're, it's becoming better and better. And I think you have Dan Campbell to really thank for that. Yeah. I, wouldn't say, yep. I wouldn't say you could thank the Fords. I would say you'd thank Dan Campbell. Well, I heard, actually, now that you brought up Campbell, that he went on a Zoom call when he was being interviewed for the job, and he went ballistic in front of their ownership, how badly he wanted. So, you know, I don't know the con- contents of the Zoom call, but if you're going to sit there and tell me that I want this job in the manner that he did, and that's not like they don't know about the guy, you might as well give him a chance. And, you know, again, I know they're in the year two in their rebuild program, and he signed a six-year contract, so – he has security, so for all those bold fourth down plays he has, not like he doesn't have any job security behind it. So, with that said, I want to talk about the Lions and the Packers. Wait, wait, wait. I think Jeremy's b- biting his tongue. Right, no, on, Jeremy. I'm just listening. Okay. I'm just listening. Okay, well, there you go. Well, with that said, I, I told Candy, how many weeks ago that this game was going to be flexed to prime time, right, Candy? Yes, you did. And why did I tell him it would be? Like Andy, 
because he said it would come down to it would be an important game to determine something. Uh, yeah, as soon as I saw that we were playing, the Lions were playing in Lambeau in Week 18 versus in Detroit. I said they think this game is going to mean something. I said it when the schedule came out. Oh, well, no, you- it's not the first time they've done that, though. No, but if you look at all the years that we played in Lambeau for the last game of the season, do you know what's been on the line every time divisional before champ- this? The divisional championship right. has been on the line every time, and we've won two out of the last seven. Yeah. Well, remember, I believe Jim Caldwell, didn't he win a game over at Lambeau, if I remember right? Yeah, but that was in the middle of the year, not the end of the year. Well, it doesn't matter. He's still won one there. Right? Yeah, I, 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 I just say yeah. we've won, we've won now four in the last decade. Right, but my point here is when I, I made this prediction three or four weeks ago, not the last week, and I said that NBC was looking for a money grab with a division title. Mm-hmm. That's all it came down to. You think about the Lions. Forget about all these other rivalries out there. Anytime you have a rivalry that dates back to the '30s and the '40s. Those are the games, if you get teams that are even somewhat competitive, they're going to put them on if they're even close. Candy got to take pictures, okay, at Lambeau Field mm-hmm. the night before my birthday, and your mom was in, uh, she was on cloud nine, as was the rest of your family. And in fact, it got so interesting, everybody in her family had to find her winter clothes to go to Lambeau, as well as a game that we did over at Camp Randall. And you want to talk about a team effort to get this girl to keep her from being frostbit out there. My in-laws were unbelievable. When I said a few weeks ago, the Lions in the Packers game was going to be flexed because it was a divisional opponent and NBC was looking for a rivalry and this was a no-brainer. Yep, it was It was either that one or it would have been... The only other one that would have been close was Jacksonville Titans. Well, but you know what? That they was what, Saturday night. Uh, would make the difference. So they did it Saturday night, right? That's what I'm but saying. I they... know I was there. No, I told you. I told you guys a long time ago. They were looking seriously at the uh, NFC East too. With you got Dallas and Washington. You got the Giants, and and you had all those. Really? All but but those things were all decided. That's why they didn't pick the Cowboys or the Giants, guys, right. because those races were oh, decided. I know. Those races were decided. Don't kid yourselves. If those races were not decided, those big wigs in New York City, they would have picked the Giants or the Cowboys game. Well, you know what, George? Let me tell you something, man. Okay. I'll take and this is gonna get interesting now. Okay. So every now and then, George and I, okay, we could go at it. Okay, and now we're gonna do it. Okay. That was a hypothetical if I ever saw about the NFC East. That division hadn't been around nearly as long as the NFC Norris, as Chris Berman would say. So I don't care what you say about Washington Dallas. I don't know what a stinker that turned out. We all know that Jalen Hurts got busted up a little bit. Yeah, busted up Hurts. Yeah, okay. And I and I miss my caffeine all the day. It could be a whole lot worse. Okay, but I have calls after the broadcast. So no, George, that's hypothetical. You sit here and tell me an NFC Norris division between the Lions and Packers, and I'll take that all day long over the NFC East. I don't care about all those. If there had been a Monday football. night game, it had been tonight. Pardon me. If there had been Monday night football in week 18, but there isn't because of the national championship, they don't want to right. go up against it. Well, and they want the teams to prepare for the playoffs having uh, six well, days off. Well, that's point here about that rival. This is a no-brainer anyways. And by the way, who is doing the telecast, George? A guy by the name of Mike Tarico. And by the way, where does he live? In Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ever heard of it? You know, it happens to be in the area. So, but no, I it's, knew all along. It's no difference where they're from. Uh, you know what? I don't care about the Dallas Cowboys. I saw them lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know, but I'm just saying, if those teams were still in play for that division, they might have, uh, they might have selected them instead of Detroit. I'm just saying, it's all hypothetical. Yeah, might, might, might. Guess what? For the sake of this show, it didn't happen, and it worked out better for everybody, so that we can talk about it and let everybody <sighs> in the chat room, as well as in the comments, or where they can all debate us all day long. But meanwhile, Mike Tarico is doing it with Chris Collinsworth. Mike's from our neck of the woods anyhow uh, in the Ann Arbor. And I'm glad that the Lions and the Packers, that there's some respect. When you think about it, anytime and, and these major networks get an opportunity, whether it's Thanksgiving or whatnot, to put the Lions, Packers on, the Lions and the Bears, 
and the Bears and the Packers. If you forget the Vikings, they haven't been around nearly as long as the other three. Sorry if I'm <laughs> alienating any Minnesota fans, but the reality is the situation Detroit, Chicago, <laughs> and Green Bay, you get an opportunity to black play and blue fight. division. That's right. We got, a, we now, got about hey, seven. I'll even take it a step further, okay? That's this. If you get an opportunity to put the Red Wings on national TV versus a doormat franchise like the Florida Panthers, okay, and, and I'm sorry about you Florida Panthers, so I'm getting you a little upset, but teams will they'll take original six teams all day long. They will because you want the original six and you want to go out there and try to preserve it as much as you possibly can to keep the rivalries in track. I'll take original six matchup on TV all day long because of the history that they have. Again, don't get me wrong. The Panthers had a heck of a year last year winning the President's Cup, and now things are kind of evening out a little bit because they were playing the win card. But I don't want to take away from the topic matter. But the Lions and the Packers, that was a no-brainer. And don't tell me that the ratings – I'll be curious to find out what the ratings were last night in terms of what the Lions and the Packers were. Well, I know it was a hit in Seattle. They'll come yeah. out. They'll come well, out very <laughs> soon. <laughs> so, really, uh, so uh, uh, Scott? Yeah. The matchup, which began at 8.20 p.m. Eastern, averaged 23.4 million viewers for NBC, making it the most watched Sunday night football season finale in six years. There you go. Boom. There you go. There's our that being said. here. So, so I, I hate go. to say, Will, NFC least is was NFC best if it was the most watched in the last six years. Yep. That that being said, Will's got about quite a few comments. The one he says uh, about TJ Hawkinson is, as you like to call him, TJ Droppinson, right, Jeremy? And then he said, yes, it was a lack of respect, the pundits picking against Detroit. And he says, you can ask Jeremy on his roundtable show, I pick the Lions a lot, even against my Panthers. And then he agreed <laughs> with me on something else I said, and he calls the NFC East the NFC least, but this year they were the NFC beast. They got three of their four teams in the playoffs. They did the they flipped the switch from what happened out in the West. It switched coasts this year. Yes, they did. And as much as I hate to say it, I could see that happening with the NFC North next season. Mm, all depends about Green Bay and what they do. Yeah, to it, it really depends upon Green Bay and yeah. what what the Bears do if they're smart with their money and who they draft this year. They have a chance of being a really improved team as well. Well, let me tell you, let's get back to a candy statistic for a moment, okay? And, again, I am going to say I told you so. I knew a few weeks ago this would be a draw, and she just went out there and gave you reasons why. NBC was smart. They knew that they had a division rival, let alone this one. It didn't hurt that the intrigue was Detroit beat the Packers earlier in the year. It got them on this incredible run anyhow. And all of a sudden, you lead up to the finale. And, and to me, it's starting to become a point where the Lions and the Packers are playing at the end of one of the last two games of the year anyhow, so it doesn't matter. And they seem to be content with that rival. It doesn't work out just by accident. It seems like the NFL scheduling department has these two rivals, you know, middle of the year, then later in the year. So, I would, you know, Candy's numbers. Read them back again one more time, Candy. I need to hear this one again. The matchup, which began at 8.20 p.m. Eastern, averaged 23.4 million viewers for NBC, making it the most watched Sunday night football season finale in six years. And don't think they aren't going to take those stats and record them in to what games they want next year and where they're going to place them. For all we know, the Lions and the Packers can end up being on national TV on two platforms and not one next year. You never know. Or whether they're on things. It's just hard to tell with the scheduling. I don't want to overblow this thing, but yeah, they're you. overdue to put the Packers and the Lions on Thanksgiving again. It's overdue. Mm -hmm. I think so too. It's that, been too that long. Being said I have the list of home and away opponents for the Lions next season already. That's for another show. That's for another yeah, show. Let's okay. be on topic. Yeah. Okay. By all means. Thanks, George. All right. So with that said, Dan Campbell didn't have to worry about any motivation last night. He didn't care about the playoffs. He just wanted to knock out Green Bay. So um, Jeremy, go yeah, ahead. yeah. Uh, Kirby Joseph put out a tweet just before the game. If we're not going, neither are you, and put a picture of Aaron Rodgers up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Let's face it, though. Going into before Sunday's games, there was a chance that Detroit could make the playoffs. The Packers could make the playoffs. 
or Seattle. So everybody in preparation until the actual game time was prepping to win because they yeah. knew they all had a chance to get into the playoffs. Absolutely. And that's a good statement. And that's very true. And yes. the only thing I didn't like is the fact that that Seattle game got done <laughs> before the Detroit and Green Bay even kicked off. But you, that's, you know that, what? That, 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 that happens that way. I loved what Dan Campbell said when he was interviewed at halftime coming out of the lot just before the locker room. Did you guys watch the game? He goes, no, we didn't. We paid no attention to it because we didn't care. We still found out because people got their alerts on their phones and stuff like that. But right. we didn't care. We were here to play a football game. We were here to win one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he had to keep that Detroit team focused. That's a good point, Jeremy. Uh, that's right on because uh, otherwise he, he could have lost those guys. Oh my God, Seattle won. It's over. No, no, no. That's not the, that that's the SOL team. Right. And, yeah, that's, that's, and, that, that's and not this team. That post other- by Kirby Joseph went out at 7.58 p.m., so he already knew the results <laughs> of the Seattle game. Well, they, they were saying that uh, that the Ford, Fords were on the field and they were watching it with the game. The with Seattle the fans, game, yep. Um, with some fans. Now, one thing I will also say is that not only were Detroit playing for respect, but they're also playing for their jobs for next year. And oh, that's yeah. one thing we all forget is that this was a regular season game. Sure, sure. It's not like they were sitting anybody down and not, you know, oh, we don't want to get them injured or we don't want to. We want to see what we have to build on for next year. Absolutely. It a is. good point, Candy, because yep. you guys are all playing for next year in a way. Everybody is, but especially a lot of those guys that the Lions are taking a close, close look at. Like, Except, or silly. anybody that's under contract year. Right. Yeah, like Khalif Raymond here or Khalif Raymond, uh, Jamal Williams, Evan Brown, Matt Nelson. I mean, there's a whole bunch of UDFAs and prove it players we signed this past year. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jamal Williams, this is his contract year because this I is know. his second year. Yep. And I don't know if I'd give him the bag, but I definitely would talk to him seriously if he wanted to give us a little bit of a hometown discount after his tweet the other day. <laughs> Well, I mean, with all that being said, though, the one thing I will say is, to me, the Lions own the Rams' first-round pick, six overall, and they have their own at 18. Yeah. And, and you got Brad Holmes, as to me, who I think should be a viable candidate for exec, exec of the year. Hey, Candy, before we go any further, why don't you give everybody uh, an overview of where they can find us? So if you are watching us for the first time, you're going to see a red subscribe button. Or if you've seen us before, but you just haven't subscribed to us, why not? I don't understand. Please hit that red subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. Listen to us if you would like to listen on podcasts. If you're driving home and you're like, oh, what do I listen to? Listen to us on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have any questions or comments, please Put them in our chat or email us at SouthFloridaTribune at gmail.com. Check out our website, SouthFloridaTribune.com. You can see Jeremy's writing, George's writing, Scott's writing, and my pictures. Why (laughs) wouldn't you come to our website? And if you want to advertise or you want to sponsor a show, call Scott, 954-304-4941. Thank you very much. Well done, Candy. So getting back to my point, Brad Holmes to me is a guy that, you know, you, you wonder what the frame situation is going to look like. He'll know which ones he wants to retain. Well, then, the, yeah, you're right, Scott. And the other thing is, is that now that Detroit won, you'll get some of these guys that will give Detroit a good, serious look. You yeah. know, when you talk about free agents, that's always important in the off season is what do they perceive the Lions to be? Well, before this, I'm sorry, it's been SOL. Losers. Yeah. That's what they thought. So Losers. now, now Brad, Brad and Coach Campbell have a have a have a, a a proof in the pudding, as they say, right. Detroit's a winning team right now. It's a winning culture. Yeah, yeah. culture. That's, that's a better word for it. That's what I want to talk about real quick, because that's what all this breeds back into. What happened this year with the way they started and the way they finished, it changed a lot of minds of a lot of people. 
for weeks now, how many times have we heard national media people going ahead and saying, yeah, I like Detroit. I, they're doing good things there. We've never heard that midseason, even when we were having good years. You know what we used to hear when we were having a good year? Oh, they're just waiting for the next wheel to fall off the wagon again. <laughs> That's what we used to hear. Well, one guy actually who I did happen to see a bit of was Lewis Riddick, who I think should have a general managerial job somewhere. Why he hasn't gotten of ESPN says he expects the Lions to be pretty good for the next five years or so. He quit twice, but anyways. Pardon me? He quit twice. He was the head scout for one team, quit there, became the GM of another, and didn't even make it past preseason. Right. Well, but you know what? Sometimes you take a break, and what happens? You become a little wiser, too. If you want any proof of that, all you need to do is go to Dick Vermeil, who was burned out, and all it did was turn into a Super Bowl championship, which, by the way, George Eichhorn did happen to. I believe you were there for Dick Vermeil's. I sure was. So, but no yeah, Mr. Lewis Riddick, though, his comments today really indicated that, you know, he believes Detroit will be strong for the next five, six years or so, and that they could be Super Bowl contenders as early as next year, which we'll see. I don't know. But it just goes to show you that the continuous respect, if you play hard for your coach and you play an entire 60 minutes without giving up, then that just shows you that that type of energy and becomes more or less contagious. So more power to Lewis. So we're t- we'll talk about the Seattle Seahawks. I know fan bases do crazy things, but if I were the Seattle Seahawks fans, what I would really do is they should send the Lions a lot of fish from the Pike Street Market for getting in the playoffs. Because <laughs> if you if you've ever been to Seattle, the Pike Street Market is a heck of a tourist place. I'll get to their candy. It is they throw fish all over the place. It's unreal. But you know, I mean, the Bills fans are known for sending chicken wings and all these other places, but it, Seattle fans, if we have any followers out there nationally here and send the lines a little fish and give them a healthy lunch or dinner or whatever, you know, and think and about this, there. the bills sent the entire Bengals defense one year gift cards to go out to eat at one of their premier restaurants because they beat the Ravens and knocked them out of the playoffs that I remember year. That. Yeah. So, but I'm talking about Seattle, okay? Not Sleepless in Seattle, one of my favorite movies. I know, I know. I I, I get it. Seattle fans where, you know, once upon a time I saw a game over at the Kingdom and I saw one of a basketball game over at the Key Arena. They've redone that nine million times over. But Seattle Seahawks fans, if you're out there listening, send the Lions a little bit of post-Christmas love and send them some fish. I'm sure they'd appreciate it because you never know if you're going to need a favor. Although they get to see him next year anyways, I believe, over at Ford Field. Of course, in Stephen A. Smith's eyes, he still thinks that they play at the Silver Dome. But Stephen A., that's okay. Oh. I'll forgive you for that one. I got some yeah. more coaching news for you. Guess who just got fired from New England? <laughs> Not Bill Matt yet. Patricia. Well, did he really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm, well, paving the oh. way for Bill Ryan to... It's not like we didn't see it coming. Wow, that's okay. You know, and you're right, Scott. Seattle is quite a story because, you know, here they get rid of their all-star quarterback, okay? And probably nobody was giving them much a a chance to make the playoffs. And lo and behold, the Seahawks sneak in. And, you know, I got to give them credit. They got a little help from those officials, though, in that game. There's some very questionable, questionable calls. Yeah, in that, that Seattle game against the Rams, very questionable. Especially that running into the punter call. That was yes. ridiculous. Well, yes. I think when you talk about Seattle, though, overall, I think they beat the Lions in their head-to-head meeting earlier. In the yes, game. they did. So, You're right. And that was probably one of the tiebreakers that may have factored into it. And it another was. thing that probably factored in was the fact that Geno Smith replaces Russell Wilson and gets him. Yeah. Go figure that. And I think that Geno Smith's got some bonuses out of it as well. Thanks for the breaking news about your favorite coach. Uh, yeah. 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 I love yeah. giving, I love giving great news about Matt Patricia. Yeah. I, I and, and you know what, Jeremy, when you get rich doing these broadcasts, you could probably go ahead and go over to the U S department of trademarks and trademark Patricia, because I'm sure that'll be in high demand, but just make sure that you have a good business person. Candy, can you find a good business person? To help uh, Trademark Patricia. We know him in Florida, but we don't know him in Michigan. Yes, but can I make a couple comments on this Seattle San Francisco? Yes. Yeah. So they have met each other 49 times. Seattle is winning that series 30 to 19, 
but the 49ers beat them both times already this year. So, you know, they always do say it is hard to beat a team yeah. three times in the same season. Now, with yeah. that being said, I would say San Francisco is playing very good ball compared to, and I think it'll be, a, I think it would be, would have been tough had it been Detroit, Green Bay, or Seattle. I think any of those teams would have their hands full against San Francisco. They are just playing lights out near the end of the season. But I still think both teams would have gave a better game than what Seattle has the chance of doing. I completely agree. Yeah, well, let's face the reality. Just because Seattle got in the playoffs means you get to play one more game and drop draft positions. In the end, the 49ers and Eagles are, in my opinion, the odds and favor to come out of the NFC to, to get to the Super Bowl. Mine I, too, I mean, Scott. Mine too. Yeah, I, I don't believe in the Dallas Cowboys. I, we saw them I, I think they're going to win week one because Tampa Bay is that bad this year. Yeah, that may be. Yeah. But, but that being on, said, yeah. Jekyll, yeah. they're who's, Jekyll and Hyde. The Cowboys who's, are Jekyll. Who's Jekyll. leading in interceptions this year as a quarterback? Oh, yeah, that's Dak Prescott because he's had eight games in a row with seven of them being multiple pick games where he threw picks. Yeah, well, I mean, all I can do is judge the Cowboys by the eye test. So when I saw the hot, and I repeat, hot Jacksonville Jaguars do and show no quit what they did, to me, I was totally impressed the fact that not only what Jacksonville did was impressive, but Dallas did not impress me one bit at all, and I think they're going to be out soon enough. So. Especially after receiving the beatdown they did in Detroit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that was a beatdown. You can say what you want, but 40 to 16 is an absolute humiliating, devastating blow to a team psyche usually, and they used it as motivation. 40 to 14 or 40 to 16? I don't remember what the score I was. I think it was 40 to 16. may have been 40 to 14. Either yeah, way. Yeah, that was a, that's it, the it, last time. I think that's the last time that they had lost anyway so after the Lions game. Right. That was the last time they lost. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They used it as motivation. A lot of teams, it'll break your psyche to lose like that. Just like the Lions right. kind of right. used that game versus Carolina, and the beat down we received from them as motivation. Yeah, well, they did. All I'll, say, all I'll say is I've gotten to see him a couple of times. Doug Peterson's a heck of a coach. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, am not no saying question. anything about – Doug Peterson and his coaching ability. No question. He has more coaching ability in his pinky than Urban Meyer has brains in his head. Oh, God, set up another show, Jeremy. Don't we got worry. a score update. We got a score update, and it's a runaway. Georgia yeah. 38, TCU 7. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Bogle, Jim Harbaugh, me. did you hear that score? 38 to 7, Jim. Different and you couldn't, be, you couldn't beat these frogs. Yeah, They're not well, frauds. Yeah, no, well, I said frogs. Oh, I have, frogs. Okay. I, was like, <laughs> I, mean, I, I have better things to do anyway so than watch that mismatch. I agree, but Scott. If you don't mind, I'd like to give my parting shot because I do have a show to get to. Sure. Okay, go right ahead. My parting shot was even though the Lions couldn't make the playoffs, they are second overall in the division with a 5-1 and one record in the division, the best record against division opponents and the sol nickname should be in the rearview mirror as it gets lowered into the ground we're not throwing dirt on it but same old lions is dead okay all right well you know what that's that if you got another show jeremy watch you later know they get a hold of you real quick and then george and i okay you, you can it. check me out on kneecap biting with smoking jeremy b on youtube you can check me out also on the south florida uh, south florida tribune.com we're under the Motor City Tribune heading, we're I'm on a list of authors with wonderful guys like George Oikon, the guy here that I've been talking to. Scott's our publisher. Candy's the one that puts all the stuff out there. And without any of these guys, I don't think I'd be half as good as I am. And well, I will. I know. All, I'll, oh. all I'll say is you come a long way, you know, and anybody that possesses a work ethic energy with you, we don't make you good. You make yourself good. All we can do is support you. And you've come a long way in the short time we've gone and look forward to a lot of big things out of you. And you can find me here every Monday that Scott does a show because I don't miss this one. And, he, <laughs> and wherever and wherever else I insert you as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm a yup guy. Can you do this? Yup. Yeah, that. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening, everybody. And 
try every day to be a better person than you were the day before because that's the only way to make the world a better place. You're the best, Jeremy. Amen, Enjoy bro. your next show, Jeremy. Thank you, buddy. Until next week. You got it. Adios. All right, so it's the three of us left here. All right, Candy, now everybody can see your Packers cap. That's okay. right. So with that said, let me go ahead and split her up a little bit so that we can do that. Any parting shots of your own? I, Jeremy did a good job, Matt, Patricia. I think really what's going to end up happening there is I wouldn't be surprised if the New England Patriots are going to bring on Bill O'Brien out of Alabama, and, and they need to do something with that offense. Matt, Patricia, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't really care. All right. Uh, Candy, why don't you give me a parting shot? Well, my parting shot, I know this is a Michigan show, and I know you guys are not necessarily Rodgers fans, but I have to say and give you guys this. As much as people think Rodgers isn't loyal, he is the longest tenured active player of any sport that is still playing for his original team. He has hmm. played his whole career with the Packers, and he's the longest one to do it than any other. I give him a lot of credit. Yes, did he? A lot of people will say he got paid immensely. He should have taken less money so they could have afforded more weapons. That's on him, and he has to live with that, and that's probably part of what is going to go into his decision in this offseason. Whether you like him or not, whether you think you have to win Super Bowls to be the greatest. I'm not saying he's necessarily the greatest, but you have to give him a lot of credit. Playing the quarterback position on uh, in the NFL, there are so many other teams that have had so many other different quarterbacks. I forget what was the stat last night, Scott, that we were seeing when they were talking about how many different quarterbacks have started the NFL this year. It was crazy. Right. So you have to give him a lot of credit. Is he the Iron Man that um, some of them had their streaks? No. But is he a prima donna? Does he have attitude? Yes, he does. He plays with some confidence. Is he the same as he was a couple years ago? No. But he is still the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, and I will back him. Well, you should. I mean, my all-time favorite quarterback was actually Brett Favre of his Iron Man streak. But Ironic ironically, Brett Favre's last – now, I don't know if this was Aaron Rodgers' last game. If it was, it ended the same way Brett Favre's did, with an interception thrown as his last completed pass. Well, we'll see how it plays out. All right, George, what's your parting shot? My parting shot is to applaud another quarterback, a guy that was kicked – Kicked by the side of the road by Sean McDermott. His name is Jared Goff, and the Sorry. Lions have the Lions have gotten a quarterback now, and they can stop looking and dreaming about drive, dra drafting a quarterback at least not in the first round because Jared Goff has been phenomenal. He has really cut down on his fumbles, his interceptions, and he's doing great with the play calling as well. So I want to applaud Jared Goff for an outstanding season in Detroit. Yeah, you only won three games last year, but you came back with nine this year. So uh, it was a good trade. As we know, we've talked about it on this show many times. It was a thievery kind of a trade by Brad Holmes, that trade with the Rams. So uh, hats off to Jared Goff and the fine job he did this year for the Detroit Lions. Yeah, Sean McVay, you're, you're, you're thinking yeah, of Sean. Sean. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. McVay, yeah, I've done a good job. It's amazing, and, and you are right. I have a parting shot of my own, but it's amazing what a difference a year makes. It really did. You know, Matthew Stafford wins a Super Bowl championship this year. Doesn't make it as a season due to injury, unfortunate. But I'm glad Matt got his Super Bowl ring nonetheless. I am really happy yeah. with that. One. My my parting shot really is kind of a different one of sorts, and that's this. You know. We've talked about Baker Mayfield contributing to three teams not making it to the playoffs. You think about it, it began with what Cleveland and then Carolina and now the Rams. If I were Baker Mayfield, I would stay right where he's at and don't chase the money. Okay. Don't do it. Let's, let's see what happens with Stafford. If he's able to come back. Uh, but again, part of his decision might be attributed to Sean, 
McVeigh staying around, and we'll see whether he gets burned out like Dick for a meal. So mm-hmm. Baker, go to a place where they like you, and don't chase the money at all. And as far as the Detroit Lions are concerned, what can I say? You 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 can make your decision in terms of evaluating certain players, but make sure Jamal Williams gets retained at all costs. Here's a guy that broke Barry Sanders' record, albeit in the 17 games. It doesn't matter. You get 17 touchdowns in a year. You're doing some awfully good work. You really are. And I think that, you know, you, we talk about Alliance Packers rivalry here. Well, Jamal Williams, right, decides to go ahead over to the rival. And how did it turn out in, mm-hmm. in, on national television? So I don't That's know. Okay. Yeah, it, to me, it's one of those things where, you, you know, division rivals see each other a couple times a year, so you know what players are productive and ver- versus which ones are not. So I know, you know, we covered a lot of ground with the Lions, not getting the respect as Rodney Dangerfield hasn't. But, you know, you come off a 9-8 and eight season, first winning season, I think, what, since, what, 2017, I believe it was? I believe so. Yeah, don't rest your coattails on just that itself, okay? You know, you have one winning season, you need to go for another one. Go ahead, Candy. I have one more parting shot if you're – Go ahead. So my parting shot is last week, Monday, many people witnessed DeMar Hamlin getting injured on the football field. Kudos to the NFL because every team – has rallied around him getting better. So I want to say kudos to the NFL because in a t- in a time when there is so much division amongst everybody to come together and to honor him, to all salute him, to the teams before the games, some of them, I know the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans, even though they're on opposite battlefield battling, they came together in the beginning of the game kneel down at at the half to give at the half line to honor him and to have a moment of silence. Kudos to the NFL. Kudos to everybody that helped Demar Hamilton, Hamlin, his the medical team, the fact that he was able to go to back to Buffalo today and in a Buffalo hospital now and is getting better. Kudos to you. Well, I'll add another one little footnote with all the attention that DeMar Hamlin's getting. Chuck Hughes is getting a lot of it now, too, because now that this thing's a week into it, more and more people are learning about what happened with Chuck Hughes on October 24th, 1971. So as far as I'm concerned, a lot of people didn't know much about Chuck, but you know what? Here's a guy that's the only guy that still has died on the field, and I'm just glad that DeMar Hamlin wasn't one of those. So. With that said, Katie, go ahead and let everybody know how they get a hold of us one more time. I want to thank everybody for joining on this, joining us on this edition of Fire Up Michigan. It's great to have Candy on once in a while doing a show that she probably wasn't crazy about doing. I know the Packers are on the wrong end, but Candy's a team player in every sense of the word, and we appreciate everywhere that she can help us out. And and she's just one of the more knowledgeable people out there, more power to her. And you know what, Ben Johnson, here's a little advice. Don't go to the Texans, okay? Look for a much better job than that one. Listen to what they have to say and find something else. All right, Candy, take us home. So for all of you that are watching, if you see a red subscribe button, hit it, please. Then you can watch all of our shows. This is Fire Up Michigan. We have Fire Up Wisconsin. We have Fire Up Florida. We have Fire Up. We have Inside the Pigskin. We have 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. No limits. Uh, Let's see. What else do we have? We have Sports Exchange. We have Real and Rare. And sometimes that is really rare. But Come over, watch our shows, give us a like, give us a subscribe, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter at Tribune South, Facebook at South Florida Tribune. We also have a website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. Listen to us if you want, if you'd like the audio version on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. But please remember, hit that red subscribe button. We're trying to get strive for a thousand. What number subscriber will you be? All right, George, you have a book. People want to know about it. Yes, I do. Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air by Arcadia Press. 
Uh, there's a link to it on the column, uh, Motor City Tribune, that I write for under the South Florida Tribune banner. And the book is about sports broadcasting in Detroit, chronicling the days of Ty Tyson and Van Patrick and Ernie Harwell and Ray Lane and our own Scott Morganroth. Scott, you're featured in the book, too. A nice picture of you interviewing two of my all-time favorites, Jimmy Connors and Muhammad Ali. So there's a link to that book. Makes a great, great uh, gift for somebody. And you can reach me at, at uh, SNG Sports 99 on Twitter or GICorn at Yahoo.com. You can also find me on Facebook as well under my name, George Icorn. Very good, George. Yeah, obviously, I feel privileged to be in the book. You know, I know Katie did an awesome job talking about all the shows. One thing, show to watch out for more of will be No Limits, where I'll have my opportunity to do a lot of one on one interviews. Jacob Christner actually had me on Pundit's View, where it's his one on one show as well. Jacob participates on the Sports Exchange on Wednesday night, and I'm with him on a couple of other shows as well. So, <clears throat> with that said, we want to thank everybody for joining us on this edition of Fire Up Michigan. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Everybody enjoy. Have a great holiday. Uh, how rest of the season? Boy, my head is still in the holidays. But football <laughs> season to me is holidays. It doesn't matter. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Fire Up Michigan, as well as the other shows that we have scheduled. So please, once again, subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. And you can follow us on Twitter at Tribune South as well. If you're watching it, that's how you can see us on Twitter as well. Candy, well done. George, well done. Jeremy, well done, even though he's on his own deal now. And we will catch you next week. Good night, everybody. God bless. Be safe out there. Enjoy playoff football, even though the Lions aren't in it. They certainly – made a lot of things difficult for a lot of those that aren't in it. So take care, everybody, and have a good evening. Bye now.